Here's the Astro 30 here again on this discrete amplifier. Well, it's turned into a project now. Uh, basically, I'm going to start routing out the PCB for this um, because it's nearly ready. When I say nearly, if you remember from the last part, which was part two, I noticed there was at least a one odd volt either in the plus or minus DC on the output. Now, there could be several reasons for that. Number one being the uh, current layout of the circuit. Everything is everywhere. As you can see, there's wires running here, wires uh, running there, and here, there, everywhere. Here a wire, there a wire. Old MacDonald had a farm. Um, or it could be a simple circuit design issue. First thing I'm going to try is this feedback gain network here. Um, for some reason the original design uses like 100k resistor as the feedback resistor so it's getting very little negative feedback there and a 4k7 um, gain resistor so what I might change these two resistors to is 22k and 1k respectively they'll give us a gain of still 23 um, and see if that will lower the uh, total DC offset um, I don't think it will and failing that, I'll move over to this section here on the input stage. Now, if you remember, this is the old schematic. Here we've got a current source for the input stage and the uh, output stage here. Now, I haven't changed anything down here. Now, I can add a current mirror as described in the last video. Um, but mainly DC offset of an amplifier is controlled by this first input transistor and I have tried putting a variable resistor in place of this 4K7 and varying it and when I put it to zero I did hear something catch on fire it went pfft, I don't know what it was um, anyhow that didn't seem to affect the overall DC offset on the output so that's what it led me to believe that um, it's probably the wiring itself. The first thing I'm going to change, as I said, I'm going to try changing this 100K and this 4K7 and see if that lowers our overall DC offset output. Well, there are many reasons why an amplifier can have a perceived DC offset uh, as represented on a uh, multimeter in the DC scale anyway. Uh, and one of them is not too thought about that much, which is oscillation. So if I turn the load on with no input connected, all we see is just a bunch of random noise. Nothing really spectacular. The amplifier is not oscillating. On any frequency that I can see anyway. So what does this mean? Not much, but that could mean that it's just piss poor layout. So anyway, let me change that gain structure. I'll just turn the DDS on so we can see a signal rather than just noise. And there goes the DDS at 100 millivolt. Uh, so I'll change that back to 500 so it's actually doing something. There we go. Um, and our time base is off a little. So I'll put that back to 2 milliseconds so we can see it. Yeah, not bad. Right. It's not exactly stable either. So let's stabilize that there we go now it looks reasonably okay um, but yeah the signal is a little bit on the noisy side just disconnecting the Zobel reconnect the Zobel um, so what I might try first is as I previously stated was changing that gain structure a little and uh, just see if that cures uh, the DC offset. Uh, just to confirm, I need to reconnect my output back to the DC, to the multimeter, so we can actually see the DC offset. Okay, multimeter connected across the output. Turn the load on. Yes, and we have a minus 1.2 volt thereabouts DC offset. So, I'll get the uh, gain structure changed and then we'll have a look. Okay, got that uh, 4K7 changed to 1K and that 100K changed to 22K and we've now got a gain of 23 
which is roughly what it was to start with. So we look at our multimeter, which is dropped back off to about 47 millivolts. We'll turn the load on. And well, interestingly, we've now got interestingly. Interestingly, we now have 700 millivolt and falling DC offset. That is very interesting, isn't it? So just that one change alone has had an effect. It's still a little bit too high, but it has had an effect on the overall DC offset. So the next thing I might try is I might change these BC double five sevens to BC double five sixes respectively for both input transistors there and then see if uh, these particular choice of transistors are just inherently noisy um, which noise would actually be a, a, a good reason as to why we're getting a larger DC offset um, yeah and then I might play with this uh, collector resistor here just to see if we can uh, drop the DC offset even further. Before I go to the point of adding in a current mirror down here, because that's two extra transistors and two resistors that doesn't really need to be on the bomb or bill of material. Okay, the two input transistors are now changed. Now oh, we'll look at our multimeter again. Load is not on, but it is now. And as I thought, that wouldn't do anything different to the output. So we've still got 600 odd millivolt DC offset, which is still too high. But the circuit's working fine with that uh, choice of transistor. So next uh, thing to try and change is this resistor, this degeneration resistor in the collector of the first transistor. Because this resistor will actually control the whole DC offset of the circuit although I couldn't get very far with a variable resistor the other day, but we may do today. So I've got a 50k variable resistor here set to around about half its resistance. I'm not sure if clockwise is, is zero or the other way is zero. I'm pretty sure it's clockwise is zero because of the way it's configured. Right, so that's just in place of that fixed 4k7 resistor. So if I turn the load on now, got 700, 600, so if I rotate the pot in the clockwise direction we can see that that's fully clockwise that the DC offsets only changing slightly so if I go in the counterclockwise direction now we can actually see it's dropping right off well, right, yeah, that is more respectable. I don't want to go too far in case so I cause something to catch on fire because using a control like this is not good. I'll try and get it close to zero, but it keeps going to 27. Okay, so we're about. 400, 300 of millivolt. So what I'll do is I'll measure the resistance of that pot and then take it to the next uh, closest value and we'll see um, what the actual DC offset is then. But of course it still could be circuit layout here as well causing the DC offset but that's the thing I'm going to do next. Okay so on the ohm scale I've taken the pot out of circuit. On the ohm scale if I measure across the pot here yeah, we've got more like closer to 1k there. Um, so I know it's around about 1k would probably be a bit better. Okay, so without making this part of the video too long, I've got a 1k in there now. I'm probably thinking it should be more closer to 560 ohm, but I don't have a 560 ohm, I've got a 470. Now the reason I didn't do this in the last video is because simply I ran out of time and I needed to get the thing edited. So, uh, turn the load on. We've got 440 millivolts, so we've shaved up 200. So I reckon maybe a 470 ohm resistor would work probably a little bit even better. Let's try it. Okay, 470 ohm is in. Turn the load on. 
Would you look at that? That's even better. So, I uh, wonder how far we can take this. 220 ohm? Maybe? Uh, so, we look at it on the millivolt scale, we've got 211 millivolts minus, but uh, yeah, it's more respectable DC offset than what was there. Um, yeah, so let's try a 220. Okay, got a 220 ohm in there now. Yeah, still 200 odd millivolt. I don't think I'm going to get it any lower than that, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's. I don't think that's going to get any any lower. I mean, I could put a current mirror there, but I just don't see the necessity to doing that. I mean, if I touch the wires on closest to the ground there, uh, it's going all over the place. So yeah, most of the rest of the DC offset or noise that's on the output is mostly because of uh, the wiring here. So proper PCB layout would most likely uh, get rid of most of that DC offset down to almost zero. And see now it's going all over the place, it's not even stable now. Okay, alright we'll hook back up to the scope, turn the um, signal on, or I should say the amplifier on. Uh, nothing unusual, I'll turn the, DD, the DDS on and make sure I've still got uh, a signal. Notice how the DDS is pretty noisy on its output. And yes, I've got an output, albeit now, it appears to be a little bit um, not stable on its signal output. Not sure why that happened now. Um, nothing I do seems to clear it up. Uh, but yeah, okay, it's uh, outputting a signal, and we should still get our our um, maximum output of 25 watt. It'll be a bit. That's that's a bit cleaner. It just can't seem to stabilise itself. It's just the wiring on the board here. I'm touching one of the ground wires and it's making a difference. So we can discount this crap at the bottom here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we're actually getting slightly more, 41 volt than we were before. That's at 450 hertz. I forgot that we're in a different frequency range now. Change that back to one kilohertz. Uh, Forty-three point two volt. Now is that clipping though? Now I've got no signal at all. Yeah, we're getting forty-two volt. It's not. That cleaned it up. Um, it's not clipping yet. 4.9, uh, 1.9, 2 volt, 2.1 volt, change the time base, just so we can see the uh, waveform a little bit better. Yeah, it's starting to clip at the bottom. So yeah, it's about 2 volt peak to peak is our maximum input sensitivity. No, yeah, no, it's still working, so fairly, fairly good. So we've got a little bit of a better DC offset on the output. So let's uh, look at the changes. So first, that should be a 22K. That should be a 1K. And this resistor off screen down here should be more like a 220 ohm. And that should be sufficient enough changes there to make the amplifier uh, work closer to where it should be in the DC spectrum realm. Uh, so with that uh, little bit of experimentation out of the way it's uh, really time to start doing the task that I've been putting off for quite a while now is laying out the circuit board for it. Um, that's going to take the most time 
So I'm not probably going to have the circuit board manufactured today. Um, but it will be manufactured by the, hopefully, the end of this week coming. Um, but it'll be in the same video as this. Uh, so when I cut from this, um, last bit of experimentation, uh, the next shot picking up from there will be uh, onto the circuit board. But I'm pretty well happy now that the thing is operating as it should be, even on breadboard. So on a PCB, if it's laid out correctly, it should operate even better. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll just go from there. And, uh, oh, the other changes I made with these are 556s, but that didn't make any difference to the um, performance of the circuit. So before I go on to the circuit board, I'll just have a listen to the output with nothing connected. Oh, that sudden turn on is a little bit of an annoying, annoyance. Um. Noise wise, I can't hear much coming out the speaker. Might be a slight hiss there, but not as pronounced as it was. No. That's all well and good. Disconnect the input wire here. Mm, okay, yeah, alright. It's not as noisy as it was, put it that way. So, slight pop it turn off. But that sudden turn on thump is kind of annoying. And uh, it doesn't always do it all the time, but it does do it most of the time. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's not a good uh, <laughs> turn on transient, let me put it that way. So I don't think I can do much about that. So let's move on to laying this circuit out on a PCB. Get the thing manufactured up and uh, yeah, uh, see what the final result is. Okay, and a few hours later I have actually got the PCB artwork done. Up the top here, sorry about that, up top here are all my zero volt rail or ground reference returns to that central point. There's a couple of blemishes there, which I have to get rid of because scrape that off slightly and there's a track here that's not complete. And there's another one down here that needs just a little bit of a touch up. And I'll just touch up the areas that need to be fixed with a little resist pen. Just to fill in the gap. And hopefully that's uh, good enough. Everything else looks alright. So that's the first thing you always do when you expose a pattern is to check your developed board thoroughly. Okay, about an hour and a bit later, I've got my PCB all cut, drilled, etc. protected. Just waiting for it to dry a little bit more. I seem to have, I don't know if that's copper or whether that's um, just a bit of doesn't look conductive, this looks like a hair or something. Um, I need the multimeter. No, it's not conductive. Okay, so it just must be a hair or the, um, where the spray just uh, bubbled or whatever. Um, the only thing I've got to watch is these traces at the edge of the board here. They're very close to the edge of the board. I just cut the board a little bit too beyond the line there and um, just going to make sure that that's not going to come into contact with the heat sink. I've also got to get my parts laid out next to me on the desk. Got a PTC, an RXE160, which uh, has a trip current of about 2.5 amp or something. That's the poly switch for the output 
in case it gets shorted to the ground. Um, I'm going to use these splay terminal connections that you put into a PCB in your solder and they are a fairly tight fit but I like a tight fit so that's what she said. So uh, yeah I've got to get the parts organized for that and uh, here is the overlay diagram. As you can see it's not overly complicated it's spaced out reasonably well. Um, I ended up going for the option of mounting the driver transistors to the heat main heat sink plus the BBE multiplier and there is ended up being two link wires on the circuit board that is unavoidable with single sided. Um, plus voltage in here, minus voltage in here, ground there, input there, output right there. Um, everything's board mounted and I'm going to build everything up on the circuit board bar this section that goes to the heat sink because I need to mount it to a heat sink. I do have an idea for that. I'm hoping it works. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the rest of this uh, circuit uh, board here in time lapse because well, a lot of people seem to like that. I don't know why. And um, I'll get it up to the point where these transistors are about to go on and then we'll um, look at what I'm going to do for heat sinking. And for the input terminal, I'm going to use one of these as I normally do because they're quite easy to use. So let me just get my uh, parts all sorted out and we'll get started. <laughs> Oh, 
Right, so there's my circuit board all assembled there. It took about half an hour, 35 minutes, something like that. Um, you may be uh, saying to yourself, uh, aren't these traces rather thin? Well, they are, but they're only on the low voltage side, well, low current side of the circuit. These thicker traces are the high current side. It should be okay for the amount of power this is going to be putting out and how much current DC wise it draws which is about one and a half amps at full power output so it shouldn't be a massive problem now on my schematic I've got this 220 microfarad incorrect polarity in the circuit the positive should not be going to the negative 35 volt rail it should be going to the zero volt rail so that capacitor is backwards in in the schematic but it's correct on the layout. So the next thing to do would be to mount this to a heatsink. Now uh, there's supposed to be a 150 ohm resistor right where this 100 ohm is. I put 100 for some reason on the circuit. I don't know why. It should work the same. That's part of the constant current source. Um, if I get any weird results on the scope, I'll change it to 150. Just bring the board down a bit. That's about right. Okay. So everything is soldered in. I've just got to be careful not to bump these transistors up against the heatsink. So now we're ready to do the first preliminary test, which is power it up with two 470 ohm resistors, well at least one anyway, um, across one of these rails so I can do the bias adjustment here so I'm gonna to have to pop you on the floor okay I got everything set up I've got a 3 amp fuse on the negative side I've got the fuse removed on the positive side going across a 470 ohm resistor across the meter in the voltage scale I'm going to limit the current to around about 500 MA just in case anything's not quite right with the circuit and I'm gonna Leave it at the 25, 26 odd volt plus minus that I've got. Turn the load on. No excessive current draw. And we've got 7.2 volt on our output. Well, 7.2 volt as in quiescent current. So if I now remove current limiting so that it's got the full available current going into the power amp. And I now turn this pot, I've got to figure out which way it goes, I think it's just clockwise for it to increase no that seems to be decreasing so it's anti-clockwise now I've got to slow down a bit but using a 10 turn, 25 turn pot actually makes it a lot easier to set this to where it needs to be So we're about to 11.5 now. That should be for a current flow through the output of 25 MA. Now if I touch my VAS transistor, sorry, my VBE multiplier transistor, I can actually see the voltage is dropping off. So we're at 11.24 now, 23, etc. going down. Now if that was connected to the heatsink, that would uh, work a lot better, but it's not. Now if I remove my finger and let the transistor start to cool down, we can see that it's starting to climb back up. So it might take a while for that to stabilize, but I can see that the VBE multiplier plus the output stage is functioning correctly. So the next thing to do would be to turn it off, and I'm going to put the other fuse back in, and I'm going to connect the meter now across the output and ground and see what our DC offset is. Okay, the other three amp fuse is now in, Turn it on, and look at that. We've got around about 97 millivolts, which is absolutely fine and absolutely perfect. Uh, it was uh, hovering around about 400 before. So yes, layout is extremely critical, but 100 millivolt minus in this case, on the um, output, perfectly all right. Okay, so we know that that's uh, going to be okay and safe enough to connect to a load and a speaker, and that was tested unloaded by the way. Next is to hook up an input signal 
and an oscilloscope and see what the output looks like. Okay, got all that set up now. Um, just got to make sure that that lead doesn't short on the ground there or else we're going to have no output signal on the input connector there. So I'll turn the load on and yep, we've got a nice stable sine wave output. Now I'm still at my 1.8 volt peak to peak in which is the maximum before clipping I believe and we've got a good 40.7 odd volt peak to peak out. We'll do a couple of calculations in a minute. Uh, just going to quickly check my output stage. It's getting warm. Uh, what was I doing? Yes, doing the maximum uh, input. So at 1.9, 2 volt, and it's starting to clip. So I want to say around about 1.8 to 1.9 for maximum out. I'll ballpark it at 1.8. It's actually 1.9 now. We're getting 43.2 out, which in actual fact is a lot better than the uh, breadboard version. So we got what? 43.2.2 divided by 2 equals 21. Uh, Six. Just turn the RS down. Multiply that by itself. Equals that. Divide it by eight. Holy shit! Fifty-eight point three two watts. That's peak. And the RMS value of that appears to be twelve point six. So twelve point six multiplied by two. No. Multiply by itself. 158 divided by the load 19 watt RMS 20 watt give or take uh, that's only running on 26 volts not running at the full 35 plus 35 let's have a look at our sweep function at full power output and it looks reasonably flat so it's got a good flat frequency response so that's not too bad still going and we're actually clipping a bit that's only because I got the amplitude too high um, I want one point uh, 1.5 will do. Uh, volt. That's a bit easier to see. Yeah, that looks reasonably flat. I'm sorry if this video is going on longer than necessary, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I'm showing oh, all the information that's relevant to this project um, and just proving that uh, my PCB version actually works a little bit better actually a lot better than the breadboard version it proves a point that breadboard is not a good substance for making a power amplifier on because of all the wiring and the capacitance that's going to be added because of the way the breadboard is it just adds extra capacitance uh, to the circuit so it's definitely no good for RF circuits let's just get that straight so if you want a breadboard out an RF circuit forget it um, use a piece of copper clad uh, and then you know cut out with a knife or something breaks in your tracks uh, where you want and dead bug solder all the components to the copper clad or at your board whatever and just make sure you've got a good ground plane and uh, yeah RF circuits can be built to be tested that way but not on breadboard um, so I'm happy with that the frequency response is relatively flat so um, I should short circuit the output and see if the protection works but I don't really want to in case it goes bang so I'm not going to do that so we're just going to go back to continuous wave and uh, stare at that a while 
But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this um, get nice and hot. Those actual 5 watt resistors are quite hot. But of course the thing's not going to be running at full power the whole entire time. Um, through its life. But uh, now I'm just going to let that run for a bit. And uh, then we'll do a sound test. Okay, so we're almost about ready for a sound test. I've got the input unloaded. I'm just going to turn the power on. I've got it connected to a speaker. Okay, a little bit of a thump there. Really need a muting relay. Okay. Sounds okay to me. So now I'll connect up some input leads to um, an audio lead to the laptop and we'll just play some music. Okay, let's get this all important sound test out of the way. Um, let's play this track and see what it sounds like. Okay, so what the next text I want to do is I want to short the output, preferably without the amplifier driving the speaker, like it's not amplifying anything, it's just got no input. So shorting the output leads together, and hopefully it doesn't destroy the output stage. If anything, it will just blow a fuse. So what I'm going to do now... that problem. I'm shorting the output. Nothing seems to be happening. It's drawing about 100 MA when I do that. So the output uh, protection with this PTC is actually doing its job. So it's protecting the output stage from being damaged due to accidental short. So let's do that again with the uh, output. Doesn't hurt it. So, that PTC will protect the output, if anything it just um, lowers the volume of the output, 
uh, in this particular case anyway. But generally speaking, the amplifier is stable. It doesn't have any thermal runaway characteristics that I have found. This uh, ground lead to the input uh, socket's not very good, but yeah. Uh, it doesn't have thermal runaway characteristics. Everything is remaining cool, even when it was driving the speaker quite loud. Uh, so for a project that's taken me about a week and a half, and the actual circuit board, I actually did this all in one day, mind you. This the circuit board design, cutting and etching and whatnot, uh, to get it to this stage. <coughs> Excuse me, all in one hour, uh, one hour, one day. It'd be nice if it was done in an hour. But I got it done in a day, um, even though I lied in the beginning of this video and said I wouldn't have it finished today. Well, I persisted. I have it finished. It's now just after half past five at night, and I started working on this uh, board layout around about 11 o'clock. So, all well and good. So I'm very happy that that's uh, turned out. It's got a reasonably low DC offset of 100 millivolts thereabouts. Uh, anywhere between that and 150 is fine. Any higher than that and yeah, it's starting to get a little bit iffy. Um, everything seems to be okay. Uh, that's the constant current source for the biasing network and that transistor is hot but it's not overly hot that you can't just hold your finger on there so and that that shouldn't uh, change um, during operation at all it should remain a constant heat anyway uh, I'm going to end this video here and I hope you enjoyed it um, I'm the Astro 30 and if you did enjoy this video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description as usual. And anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying thank you for watching. And cheers. Excellent. That, that's, that's well worth it after a hard day's work.